What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. On our last video, we had several people comment and want to know how the whole chicken tractor thing was going. And when I read those comments, I said, Oh, you want to hear me talk about the chicken tractor, do you? I could talk about this thing for hours. But I won't keep you for hours, just be a few minutes. I want to talk about what we're doing here why it's working so well and why I think this is really something incredible that you should implement for your homestead if you do a lot of gardening and if you've got the land to do it. So currently we've got our chicken tractor rotating around this pretty decent sized plot of Balanza clover here. And I'll show you kind of the progression of the rotation and kind of how the grow back is going. So we've been moving this guy every day the last week or so haven't been giving them any chicken food just been letting them eat this clover here and so it came from that way and now it's going back up that way so this was yesterday before i moved it this was the first spot they were on so if we walk around here we can kind of see the progression so that right there you really can't tell if you didn't know any better that that had ever been grazed it grew back so well but if we look at the kind of center of the plot here where it hasn't been grazed we can see a little bit of height difference there between what has been grazed and grew back and what hasn't been grazed at all so i basically took them around the outside perimeter of this plot here down this way along that way and then back down here all the way around to where they are now so when we first started rotating them around this plot of clover here i was still giving them some chicken food some pellets and when they were getting that chicken food i could get away with only moving this thing every two to three days or so but once i cut off the chicken food just to see what would happen then obviously they eat a lot more of the clover which is kind of what we want to happen. And so we start moving them every day then. So if we take a little closer look here, this is the damage they can do in one day. And as soon as you move them on a new plot, they just start going crazy, eating all the leaves off that clover there and basically just leaving the stems. And this is the time of day I usually come out here and move them. You can see they're looking at me. They're like, okay, we're ready to move on to some greener pastures tired of working on this spot here ready for a new spot so since they're ready let's go ahead and move them today before they get any more upset and get our water out of here before we move it y'all get back and lift up the back end here with our chick lift and we're ready to move Come on, girls. So you can see there, as soon as we move them onto a fresh new patch of clover, they just immediately start tearing it up. Because in this spot right here where they just were, They've eaten almost all the leaves out of there. There may be a few where the water can was sitting, but they've pretty much eaten all they can eat right there. So they were ready for some more food. Now, I don't know if there's any real advantage to this as far as the health of the chickens go, but I have noticed when they're not getting the pellets, when they're just eating the clover like they are now, they're moving a lot more. They're a lot more active. They're not kind of loafing around and just sitting down in there waiting on somebody to feed them. So, it definitely has improved the activity of the chickens and i'd like to think that chickens moving around eating are in a little better shape than chickens are just laying down so now that we've kind of covered our daily routine with these gals here i want to talk about why this is such a great addition for our homestead and why it may be something you want to consider for your homestead now our first experience with a mobile chicken pen was probably i don't know four or five years ago I built one that was rectangular in shape. It was a good bit longer than that one there. I built it way too heavy. I used two by fours. I could move it, but I had to really, really psych myself up to move it. 
and I kind of dreaded moving it because it was so heavy. Because it was so heavy to move daily, you know, like we're doing this one here, what I did was I got some of that Premier One netting that you see on a lot of YouTube channels, and I basically fenced off an area with the mobile chicken pen inside of it. I had a little flap there where they could go in there at night and I'd just come out there at night and kind of, you know, flip the latch on that flap there. So during the day they'd roam amongst that fenced in area at night, they'd go back in the mobile chicken pen. And that worked better for that particular one that was so heavy because I didn't have to move it as often. The problem we had with that scenario is that we have a lot of hawks around here and they just started picking off those chickens one by one. I had something get into the netting while it was pretty well charged up and uh, pull one of the chickens heads through the netting and obviously that was it for that chicken. So we had a lot of predator issues when we were using that setup. I like that setup, but I didn't want to try that again and end up losing all my chickens. One other issue I kind of had with the netting situation was that the chickens didn't always graze the fenced in areas evenly. Some parts of it they would graze heavier than others and it would get a little patchy over time. Whereas with this system, I can control the grazing a lot more and I can get a lot more even grazing and an even distribution of manure. So we had a system like this at one time. Worked okay, not great. Kind of ended badly by losing all the chickens. Ended up giving away that particular mobile chicken pen because I didn't want to fool with it anymore. So considering that, why are we doing this again? Why? does this idea work so well for what we do here at lazy dog farm well for one we're growing all these cover crops anyway even before we got these chickens this summer we were still planning on growing all these cover crops that you see in the winter months like it is now or the late fall months whatever you want to call it we usually only have four maybe five of our ten plots planted in vegetables the other five are cover crop and then we do a significant amount of cover cropping in those months of August and September even early October sometimes when it's too hot down here to really grow anything in the summer so we've got all these cover crops that we use for a variety of reasons to improve our soil we've got all this forage out here already why not add some chickens into the mix and let them enjoy it as well now I'm not trying to knock everybody who has a stationary chicken pen. I know most people have their chicken pen in one place and it never moves. But if you have a garden, if you have enough land and you're physically able to have a chicken pen that you can move around in your garden, I think that is significantly better than having your chicken pen just in one place. You know, if your chicken pen's in one place, then you're having to feed those chickens pretty much all the time because, like we see here, even in a day, they can wear out a piece of ground pretty quick. But with this system, for the last week and a half, I haven't had to feed them at all. Now, I'm curious to know whether or how that's going to impact any egg production. Do they really need the nutrients that's in that chicken food or are they just good on this clover? I guess we'll see and if any of you got any thoughts on that please do let me know so we have chickens we don't have eggs yet but we should in the next month or so we have chickens we should be getting eggs and we're really not having to pay any money to feed them because we're growing these cover crops anyway and they really like to enjoy them too so we're growing the cover crops anyway we're saving a lot on feed costs and the third one is we don't have to do any manure spreading they're doing it for us. If you got a stationary chicken pen, you're probably going in there every now and then, scooping it out, putting it in a wheelbarrow, taking it out to your garden, and broadcasting it or spreading it out on the plot. Here, we don't have to worry with that. As long as we keep this thing moved around these plots here, they're doing all the spreading for us, and we just have to get the ground ready as far as you know, getting the cover crop terminated before we're ready to plant. We don't have to worry about spreading any manure or anything like that. Now, if they haven't already, somebody's gonna comment wanting to know if I have a plan or sketch of this thing and how I built it, and I don't. I searched online 
I went through several, several pages on Google looking at different sites and looking at different people's layouts. And I knew I didn't want a rectangular one anymore. I wanted to go with an A-frame. And I just looked around, looked around, and I found something kind of similar to this. And I wish I remembered the site. I wish I had the link, but I don't. I just kind of started drawing on paper since then. But I didn't plan the whole thing out at one time. It was kind of like, okay, let's build the skeleton of it underneath the barn. And then let's kind of just add the pieces as we go, as we kind of really think about it and figure out how we want it to look and how we want it to function. So there was a lot of head scratching. Thankfully, I had some time. I didn't have to get in a hurry, rush anything. And it's perfect for me, for what we want to do. But everybody's situation is different. So, you know, a rectangular one may work best for some people. A-frame may work best for some people. There's no, like, perfect chicken tractor out there. It just depends on, on what you're dealing with. This one here is perfect for six chickens. I don't think it would do well with seven, but it can hold more than five. So it's perfect for what we're doing here, but everybody's situation is different. What I would recommend doing is just going online, look at a bunch of different designs, and go from there and kind of customize your own if you do want to build yourself one. Now, if you are going to build one of these, a few things to consider. So... The rectangular ones are a lot easier to build, obviously, with an A-frame like this. There's a lot more angles that go into it. It's a little more technical as far as building it. That's why it took me a lot longer. I'm no master carpenter or anything. But I think the number one thing you have to consider if you're going to build one of these, or even if maybe you're going to go buy one, is weight. If you're going to be moving this thing around the garden, you want to be able to move it relatively with ease now when i built this i didn't have any intentions of using that chick lift i didn't even know those things existed and so i have handles on both sides of mine and me and brooklyn can move it pretty easily just by picking up on both ends but the chick lift makes it so much easier and one person can move it it's really easy to move i can move it 100 yards or so pretty easily in a short amount of time but think about the weight you don't want it too heavy i know a lot of people build them out of pvc pipe and get them nice and light i was worried about mine being too light because i didn't want it to blow away or have to worry about coming out here and weighing it down if we were to get some high winds so for me there was kind of a thin line there between being heavy enough where it's not going to go anywhere and being too heavy where it's a pain to move now the other thing you got to consider if you're building one of these and going to use one of these on your homestead is do you have a lot of digging predators and we have cats and dogs here but they're really not bad about digging and we've had this working in the garden for a few months now and i've yet to notice them digging around there trying to scratch in there some people say oh you've got to have a wire bottom to it so weasels and whatever other critters you got can't dig into it I don't know that I've ever seen a weasel in person in my entire life. So uh, I don't believe we have any weasel problems here. But if you have problems with things digging under it, then it, it might not work as well. Because I think if you have a wire bottom on it, then the chickens are not going to be able to forage as effectively as they are now with the open bottom. So that might change things up a little bit for you. I'm sure there's some things you can do to kind of protect the side so nothing can dig into there. But for what we're doing, moving this around, grazing with it, you know, I just don't think a, a chicken wire or hardware cloth bottom would work very well. It would just smush the vegetation and as opposed to it being kind of full and lush and the chickens really getting in there and eating a lot of it. Now let's talk about the grazing aspect of this. Now I know a lot of people just let their chickens free roam in the yard, but I've always wondered what those people do in the winter time when all the grass is dead. Here, there's really no grass to eat if we let them free roam. So it's a good thing we have this cover crop planted. So if you let them free roam, do you plant a cover crop or do you overseed something in your lawn so they have something to eat? Just curious about that if anybody wants to kind of fill me in on that. But here, the cover crops work great for grazing and there are several different ones you could use and they all would work probably a little bit differently. Some cover crops are more tolerant to grazing, some are not. So you definitely want to pick one that was 
somewhat tolerant to grazing uh, that's going to grow back leaving it on there just a day you probably won't be coming out here moving this thing twice a day so we've got the clover here which is really tolerant to grazing as you can see it grows back really really well and you could use pretty much any type of clover you could use crimson clover you could use bursine clover which we grew last year this balanza clover is doing great for us you could use white dutch clover which is one that would work better you know kind of in the spring months because it's a little more heat tolerant it's not going to go to seed as quick on you in addition to the clover we've got some bayou kale planted over here some kale specifically designed for grazing it's only about that tall so it's going to be a little while for it. that's ready to graze and then as far as warm season stuff goes uh, you could do sorghum sedan grass if you can kind of keep it from getting too tall if it got too tall it'd be hard to move the chicken tractor around but it's really tolerant to mowing and grazing and so that one would work well in the warmer months and then you've got field peas obviously whether it be iron clay peas or some kind of you know pink eye peas whatever that you like to eat we let ours graze on some pea crops that we were done harvesting earlier this year and that worked really really well now the peas can tolerate grazing but they don't grow back as good as this clover does. With the size of the plot here, I could just keep working these guys around this plot until spring and I'm ready to plant it. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna put them on that kale for a little bit once they're done one round on here. But this clover grows back so well that we could do that. With the field peas, it seemed that once they went over the plot one time, it was pretty much done. We get a little bit of regrowth, but not a lot. So some are gonna grow back better than others. You just kind of have to experiment with it and play with it. Sometimes temperature, rainfall plays into that as well. And you're also gonna have to experiment a little bit, figuring out how long you can leave the chicken tractor on a spot, how many days before it's really wore out. You don't want to leave it on there too long because your regrowth might not be that great. You might start getting some weeds popping through there. The goal here is to maintain a dense cover. So we want to let the chickens eat, but we don't want to let them destroy it too much so it can grow back, keep that weed suppression there, and keep that ground covered. So I told you all the great reasons why we like our chicken tractor, why we like this strategy, why it's working so well for us, but there's always gonna be a downside to everything, right? So what are some of the disadvantages to this technique? Well, number one is you gotta move it every day. So you kinda gotta be home most of the time and you gotta be willing to come out here and move it every day or at least every couple days, just depending on the grazing pressure you've got, the number of chickens, what kind of cover crop, all that good stuff we talked about before. Now, if we go out of town camping or something and are gone two or three days, I don't worry about it too much. They kind of, you know, wear out the soil in that spot, but as soon as they get back, we get around to moving them every day again. So, I mean, if you leave them on a spot a couple days, two to three days, it's not gonna hurt anything. But ideally, you want to be moving them every day, or we do, at least for what we're doing here on this clover plot. The second disadvantage I see is that this does take some pre-planning. You've got to plan ahead and plant the cover crop. Now, we're doing that anyway, but if you're new to cover cropping and all that stuff, you've got to kind of plan ahead to make sure those chickens are going to have something to eat. If I don't plant this clover at the right time between kind of beginning and middle of October and get it up and good before it gets too cold down here, then I'm not going to have a really good stand to graze. So I have to be thinking ahead. I have to always be a couple months ahead in my mind as far as having a cover crop for them to eat. Now, in the warmer months, if I don't have a cover crop plot ready, I can just let them you know, just move them around the grass, that'd be fine. But there's no grass to eat this time of year. And if I just put them on the grass and move them around, they're gonna end up tearing up our yard, which is not a huge deal, but I'd rather keep them in the garden where we can actually use that manure that they're putting down. And then the third disadvantage to this system is that for this to really work well, you gotta till it in. You gotta till the plot once the chickens are done grazing it, whenever you're ready to plant that plot again. Now, you don't have to till to terminate a cover crop. You can terminate it with a tarp, 
there's several ways you can terminate it without tilling but with all that chicken manure on top of the soil there I just think it would be too hot to plant directly into that I think it'd be too hot to direct seed into it and it might still be too hot to put a transplant into it and it's really going to work well um, from my experience is just working with chicken manure when we've spread it on plots it's going to work better if you till it into the soil um, you know kind of distribute those nutrients a little more evenly as opposed to being right on top of the soil there hey chloe my kitty cat joined me so hopefully my chicken tractor thesis was thought provoking for you and even if you don't have enough land to really do the whole chicken tractor thing hopefully you enjoyed kind of understanding why we're doing it how we're doing it and our end goal here and before we go i want to do a little flashback to a night or two ago when i put up our english peas so you might remember a few videos ago we harvested those pls 595 peas we had enough to get all the stuff out to freeze a few bags and people are always asking how do you freeze this how do you preserve this so i figured i'd show you guys how we do it all right so we got our peas here from our first harvest of that PLS 595 variety. Not a ton, but enough to put up a few bags, I believe. And when you're doing this, it's a good idea to go ahead and have everything together. In fact, sometimes it takes longer to set up than it actually does to do this, but it goes pretty fast. So we got our vacuum bags there, our food saver vacuum sealer. We got our bowl of ice for our ice bath. We got our strainer in the sink. And then you want to go ahead and have your water boiling here. So the first thing we want to do is put our peas in this boiling water for three minutes. We'll let those roll. Maybe turn the heat up just a hair just to keep them boiling exactly three minutes. And after three minutes in the boiling water, we just want to drain them. And then we'll put them right into this ice bath here to keep them from cooking anymore. Once they've cooled in that ice bath for a few minutes, I kind of skim the ice off the top there. And then we're going to pour them back in the strainer. Let that water drain off a little bit. Then we'll start putting them in our vacuum bags here. I like these little quart bags. Nice little serving amount. I don't want to fill them up all the way. I think I may take three bags here and just kind of get them equally full among the three bags. So I was able to get three bags worth here. Not a lot, but better than nothing. Now, if you have a decent sized garden and you do a lot of corn, field peas, English peas like this, stuff you put in the freezer, one of these food savers here is a really, really good investment. We got this one not long after we got married, so we've had it around eight years or so. And I tried to find this model online because a lot of people were asking about it, but they don't make this model anymore. They, they've got lots of different models out there. One of the reasons I like this one is because it has this little channel in it right here. It's kind of like a moisture channel. And so even if these peas are a little wet, it will vacuum that moisture out of there. It will collect in that little channel right there and it will usually still seal okay. Now I don't know if the resolution of the camera can pick this up, but you can see here you got three different speeds, high, normal, and gentle and you got moist and dry there. So we usually use the moist setting when we're dealing with something like these peas that aren't completely dry. You can just seal if you want to. We do vacuum and seal that way it vacuums it then seals it kind of all in one punch there. So we just take our bag of peas here, like to flatten it out a little bit. That way it sits in the freezer a little better. We kind of flatten it out a little bit on the counter. Put that in that little channel right there. Close the lid, lock it down. We'll put the setting on moist, and then we'll do vacuum and seal. And we'll open her up. And we've got a nice little continuous seal there. So these babies are stored in the fridge well. Sometimes 
if the contents of the bag have a lot of water in them you have to run it a couple times just so we can suck all that water out but it's easier to me than sitting around letting these things dry or trying to hand dry them and there we go we got our three bags of peas ready for the freezer so we can enjoy them whenever we want and one more thing i like about this particular food saver model is that it stores like that so it doesn't take up near as much room in your pantry or wherever you put it as opposed to laying it flat you can store it upright and we're back so hopefully you enjoyed seeing that process there hopefully we can get a few more harvest and freeze a little more i'd like to put at least seven or eight bags in the fridge before it's all over and we're supposed to get in like the high 70s next week so i don't see any freezing temperatures coming anytime soon so we should at least be able to get two maybe three more harvest off those guys and add to that freezer stock if you have any additional thoughts on the whole chicken tractor thing please do share in the comments below if you have one and use one tell me why you like it maybe add to some of those disadvantages i listed so we can just be real with folks and they know what to expect if you have questions more questions about what we're doing here with the chicken tractor put those in the comments as well and i'll try to answer them for you and if you haven't already, head on over to our website, LazyDogFarm.com, where you'll find some good garden recipes, recommended products, and some nice Lazy Dog Farm merch. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell. Mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life